atrocities committed by an individual or group or faction or parties. These are of concern to us. Um, the atrocities of uh, Israeli forces in uh, Gaza, and that's real, and killing 40,000 people. That is atrocity, that is fanaticism to our D, to our, as far as I'm concerned. Now, issues if raised by countries to contain, uh, to, un to secure understanding, and uh, to ensure that uh, we have good bilateral relations would continue. And, and uh, we are open to any ideas, and if evidence submitted, we, we, we will not condone terrorism. But we have to produce a compelling case to support. Uh, and, and we have been tough. We've been uh, working together with India in many of these issues against uh, terrorist cells. Uh, but I do think one uh, case should deter us from further collaboration and enhancing our bilateral co uh, cooperation. Yes, please. Uh, good evening, sir. This is Yeshi Seli from the New Indian Express. I have two small questions. Uh, Prime Minister Modi spoke about uh, you know, trade in local currencies between India and Malaysia. Can you throw light on that? And also, you know, our neighbors, whether it is Bangladesh or Myanmar, are uh, unstable right now. Did that come uh, up for discussion? Were there any uh, things that you talked about? The uh, decision to use as much as possible local currency is something um, which we um, acknowledge is important, a priority. Our central bank has agreed the use of rupees and ringgit. Uh, we have done so successfully, at least 20% at least of our trade with China, or 18% with Thailand, or close to 20% with Indonesia. So we're expanding this um, to use local currency denominations in our trade. And um, I certainly uh, responded very positively to the um, proposal by uh, Prime Minister Modi on the need to uh, use local currency, rupees, and ringgit. And I think um, it's time that countries in the global south wake up and uh, depend on themselves and their comrades rather than uh, depending on the more obsolete uh, monetary system that has weakened our position in many fields. On the issue of uh, Myanmar, yes, we did discuss. We are a bit concerned about the developments now, but um, I, I think we need to uh, engage a bit more. Uh, ASEAN position of the five-point consensus is not to recognize. But notwithstanding that, we do accept the need to engage at the different level. And uh, I've mentioned this because uh, India can uh, participate in this process. We are all concerned. Now, on Bangladesh, the development, of course, is uh, uh, being, still being debated. We, I did make a call to uh, Professor Muhammad Yunus to say that you know we wish them well. To, uh, hopefully, country is stable and uh, protect the issue of human rights and the rights of minorities. He has given categorical assurance to that effect, and we need to give them some time. And uh, we, um, as neighbours, uh, particularly India, I mean, we should do whatever we can to ensure that there is a peaceful transition in Bangladesh. What the people decide finally through a democratic process. And, um, and, I, and I just hope uh, well for people of Bangladesh. And I think our duty is to make sure that there is peace uh, immediately and then the, the transition that they plan should happen as uh, soon as possible, a particularly democratic transition. 
because economically they were doing relatively well and they need to sustain that and probably um, enhance that uh, or propel economic growth. Pacific, uh, particularly in the context of great power competition that we have uh, seen in that region. And there have been uh, criticisms against the formation of various blocks. Uh, case in point is Quad. So how do you see Quad's overall agenda, uh, particularly vis-a-vis -vis, uh, uh, the Indo-Pacific and, uh, and overall situation, uh, your assessment? Our position, as I said, centrality is to avoid any action or decision or policy or move that could be construed to be unnecessarily provocative. So that position to me is uh, paramount, is pertinent in ensuring a peaceful um, region, particularly in the Asia Pacific, you know, both in the, uh, in the Indian Ocean or the Chinese, uh, South China Sea. And, and I think that position should be respected. As far as we are concerned, bilaterally we should engage Multilaterally, we should engage. Um, so any move that it could be deemed, it may not be uh, intentionally uh, construed as provocative, but if it's seen by the other side provocative, you need to engage and avoid. Because there's too much at stake. And, and to me, politics and governance is about welfare of the people, not ego of one or two personalities. Um, we, our people have suffered uh, immensely um, and it is uh, our commitment uh, having leading governments and leaders to ensure that we have policies that remain sane uh, to focus on the welfare of our people. And this is, the, to me, an excellent time post-COVID after such a, um, hardship. It is time that we refocus. That is why I, I can, for example, be strong in some of my issue, views, be, be it the um, oppression in Myanmar or the uh, colonization of um, Gaza. But uh, for our region, we should uh, avoid. We have learned in the sub-regions where there is calamity, where there is wars. It is the people that suffer. Thank you. All right. uh, we have over short our time, but since Prime Minister has been so kind in answering questions, yes, we perhaps can have one or two more. Please. In future, if yuan was to supersede the dollar, would Malaysia have any problem with that in a rising global south? Mm. You ask about the future. Normally, when people ask me about the future, I say, okay, Sarah, Sarah. <laughs> no, no, jokes aside. No, I, why should be tied? I mean, we use the dollar. It's still an important agency for exchange. But why should we be obsessed or dependent on that? Uh, what we are doing now is to uh, work uh, on a viable alternative that will be, is, be more just. I told the um, uh, Prime Minister during the bilateral session, you know, Last year, investments grew. Uh, growth was uh, impressive. Inflation was down, low, 2%. Uh, unemployment, 3%. And still, major attack on the ringgit. Nothing to do with economic fundamentals. Just what Fed in Washington, D.C. decide. So I, well, there's nothing much we can do except to use other avenues where we can help resolve and ease the impact. That is why, whilst we still de are dependent in some areas about the dollar transactions in dollars, but we use uh, uh, our own uh, local currency denominations to uh, ensure that at least we have certain percentage um, into our deals that could uh, probably reduce the negative impact. Because finally, in, in, in managing the economy, uh, we talk about fundamentals. Well, the fundamentals are well guarded, and there are tough measures. Subsidy rationalization, getting, ensure that the quality education and public health and, and basic infrastructure, all being done. And, and uh, good governance, wiping 
uh, or combating against excesses and corruption, all moves are being done. But still, we are finally subjected to the decision at the Fed. This, of course, is nothing about a fair international financial international architecture. No. I used to be uh, one time even chairman of the World Bank and IMF, or Development Committee. My, my position has been consistent. I mean, the over-dependence of a system that do not uh, cater for the interests of the majority, or the principle of just order, be it in the trade or in financial architecture, is, uh, cannot be um, accepted any longer. Now, since we do not have the capacity to change now, we do it in our own way, at least reduce the impact. And I think if we can use, the, for example, with the uh, $20 billion trade, of $80 billion trade, a fraction, 20%, 30% in our local currency, it will ease the negative uh, impact. 